So Coventry City are a team this year in the playoffs of the championship and the FA Cup semis. This is a huge achievement as as well as this they sold their two best players last year in Gioqueres and Hermes. And yes, so far this year it looks like it's worked out for them as today we take over Coventry. And it's a straightforward rebuild as we take the once Sky Bet League 2 team to the Premier League. And do you guys want kits like this one, this one, or even this one? If you do, make sure to check out Soccer Deal Shop, link in the description. Cheap and affordable replica kits, and if you use MWS in the promo code checkout, you get yourselves 10% off. As in order to get the most out of this Coventry City side, I am gonna set a tactical vision this time round, and I'm going Tiki Taka. I don't know, I've just got a feeling that if we pass the ball around, we have the players capable. As this is the starting team, not the worst ratings in the entire world, but if we are to move up, we need more players. Best ones in this team is actually Hoher, who I haven't seen play much, Hadji Wright and Van Ijwe. If that's even how you say his name, as yet, he's a 22-year-old right-back player who I can see going to the very top. As another player I do as well, ex-Arsenal player Ben Sheaf, who just, to me, really screams a centre-back. We're going to make signing season number one as another player I absolutely adore is Justin Abikwu, who is on loan at my club Grimsby. And after watching him quite a few times, I really, really rate the youngster as we've still got 10 million to improve this team. And it was about 11, as we've still got a lot of contracts that are running out this season, so we've got to sign these up. Including Justin Abiqua, who runs out of contracts very soon. Gonna leave that for now. And look at some more signings. As I've switched formation up as well going into this season, I want to go with this, with Sakamoto on the right and right on the left. It doesn't make sense. I know, I get it. But I'm going to change into a left mid, which screams to me that Sheaf does have to change into a centre-back in our squad. And also we could do with a keeper. Collins isn't too great. There's also Ben Wilson, who has scored a goal in football before. I believe it was last season. And Simon Moore, the third choice. As we could actually already do with getting rid of one of those keepers, as I've already got my first choice here, Noah Atubolu. Or I haven't really got him. I put a £5 million bid in. And also a bid in for Marcos Lopez of Feyenoord. Two nice little signings if we can get them into the club right here as the first one is joining. And I believe that's the Peruvian. Yes, it is, Marcus Lopez. I know we've got Jay De Silva or whichever De Silva it is. And he is the same rating. Maybe just a bit younger. And I am sorry to Jake Bidwell, but he's replaced on the bench. And I'm putting Lopez straight in. I think that's a rather good change. As of course, we've spent all the money going for these two players. But we've signed them both. As here's Noah Atabolu, 73 rated at only 21 year old. He could be for endgame. Growing as a keeper with us all the way throughout this journey. As speaking of the journey, who do we start with this year? Okay, it's going to be Sunderland. An interesting first game. Of course, a really good team with a lot of young prospects themselves. But we've just signed two young players, of course, for ourselves. We've got a few players out of position but we managed to get a draw. And let's just rip the band-aid straight off of Coventry, shall we? And see where we are as we are seventh in the championship. Not as actually bad as I was expecting to see, but then again, apart from Hull City, we don't really have chance of the playoffs. Middlesbrough seven points ahead. I mean, it can all change. You saw what those two teams at the top have done in real life. Leeds and Leicester, both of those going on a huge bottling mission as the team all around 
has some good ratings, but it seems like it doesn't know what it's doing because Hadji Wright probably has been playing up front as I see Casey Palmer's got green energy or sharpness, whatever it is. The little diamond icon tells me that he's been playing and also Joel has been playing. Not going to try and, of course, say that second name on that man, but I'm guessing it's been putting him in because I haven't changed Ben Shee, who has gone up to rating and he's ready to become a centre back. So with that change, his rating stays still. Hopefully, unlike the squad, as you can see on my list right here, I'm going to try and sell a lot of players in January. Not that we need to sell straight away. I would be happy finishing sixth, if I'm all honest with you. But these are old players. As there we go, we're selling three of them right there. Bidwell, Allen and Palmer. But I can't get rid of any more. As that should give us money for next season anyway. As I gambled on this season being good enough, which we weren't. Eighth, I mean, it is only one place down. So we've kind of kept consistent, but not enough for the playoffs. Hull and Coventry could very realistically be in them positions this year. And yep, disappointing as Leeds and Leicester go in the automatics. And it's a shame with Leicester as could we repeat the real life FA Cup journey? No as Wolves win it in-game. Of course, in real life, Coventry beat Hull in the quarterfinals, as I don't see us in the Carabao. There we are beating Wigan, but obviously no one else, as we have a position change to Hadji Wright. I had to go centre forward, as it took a long time for left mid. And with that change, I should be able to just drop in behind the striker without disturbing the position, as I can't, but... It's now a centre forward, as maybe it's a formation change. We did change our bat line. We got Bobby Thomas now partnering with Ben Sheep, who looks to be our best player now taking over Milan Van Eswick and also Noah Ratabolu, 77 overall. Good ratings for this COV team as Callum O'Hare was the most prolific. 17 goals. That is quite a lot. With Hadji right in second and Ellie Sims in third. He's a very greedy man though. Getting no assists season number one. And season number two with the Sky Blues in the championship. My aim this season is to just add a bit of quality as you can see. Our team does look okay. There is a few lowish ratings, but I'm going to replace who you don't expect. As centre mid, yes, I know Eccles is the captain and I believe homegrown and top is very good. But we've got no depth on the bench there and also in the striker position. So Bobby Thomas... I'm letting you off big time, as he's ultimately the lowest rated. And we've got 17 million, so we can actually get some really quality players. As of course they need to be quality, because they're taking out 74 rated, or trying to take out, they'll still be fighting for their positions. As it obviously goes without saying that promotion is the aim this season, and maybe not even playoffs. We should be pushing automatics. First to fifth. That's what I'd kind of accept. We are not aiming just to scrape as a big money signing is Juan Ignacio Nardoni. He's coming from the Argentinian League. 21 year old and 75 rated. A very good player who's not on his own in his ventures from Argentina as Augustin Ruberto joins him on the road. Was it Ruberto or Ruberto? It was Ruberto. And this guy's very good. Only 18 years of age. And just for now, Eccles is dropped for Nardoni. As I know he's quite good, but he's a CDM, not sentiment. So he's going to have to stay patient. As we've got a lot of contracts as well to sign up. This will probably be the remainder of us cash gone. And without further ado after this... We've got to get to the season. No messing with our style of play, which did work year number one as QPR game number one in this season. As they survived relegation and can our Tiki Taka exploit the R's? Yes, it does. And it's safe to say that halfway through season number two in our championship season, as we battle for the title, 
We must have the best squad in the league. With 280 rated and almost third, or should I say almost fourth, with our Nardoni being brilliant. Honestly, look at the ratings as Captain Ben Sheaf, newly elected captain, as he definitely deserves it, leads the way with Milan in second. Atu Bolu's gonna be brilliant. Lopez as well. It's coming together quite nicely. As we still have 3 million, I actually didn't spend all the cash straight away. We got 17, which was a lot, as we're a lot at top of the league. 56 points and 9 clear of second and third. Who could still put up a chase? We saw what happened with Leicester this year. And end of the year, well, you can see what we've done. We finished first, and yes, we really didn't fall off. Didn't crumble like an apple and of course like Leicester City as Watford did though, as strong as Anthony's left foot. Very disappointing from them and a bit disappointing in the FA Cup. Another round of 16 where we did meet Manchester City, a team that'll literally beat anyone as Carabao Cup, we lost to Fulham. Not having the luck in that, then again, I don't really care at the moment, as all I care about is promotion for Coventry and a very good looking team that should clearly survive in the Prem. Now with an 83 rated Ben Sheaf as a centre back and all round good ratings, with top scorers being Callum O'Hare, again with 27 goals. Of course, he's 27 years old as well, so not much room for progression. As there's a fight going on here as well between Sims and Wright for second top scorer, as Wright's position's not changing. And it's really refreshing, actually, having a very good team in the championship as we're not there anymore. Coventry our Premier League but like I just said at the end of the season right is really not right in the starting 11 he sticks out like a sore thumb so we're gonna have to do something about that either get his position changed for the better as money wise we've got 58 million so yeah maybe we could fix him make him a striker and just sit him on the bench as I can't replace Callum O'Hare but I can try and help him. Going for a player maybe that sits on the left and then a centre half. I'm sorry, Bobby Thomas, but you're not going to do it. As also, we need to pay contracts out, including Ben Sheaf, who we need to definitely stay here. As I've got to reiterate as well, my condolences for Bobby Thomas, because not only is he getting replaced, He's getting sold after this man's in. As I don't want him getting pushed out of position at all. It is Lucas Beraldo, PSG centre-back. And there straight afterwards is Bobby Thomas leaving because the next player after Bernard is one even more expensive. This man clears all our bank account. Honestly, he's cost 40 million and here he is. It is Samuel Illing Jr. Or it's probably just Jr. as he is English and he has pace to burn. That is the team we've made, actually. One more change and that is the team. Even the bench is really set now. De Silva's still there. Joel's still there. Mason Clark. Roberto versus Hadji Wright is gonna be interesting. Who makes the backup position? I don't know as preseason has popped up as I'm simming towards Manchester City. Always disappointing to start with Manchester City as we usually do in these saves. And to be fair, I strike like Nardoni and Illing Jr. as players City might want themselves, but not if Grealish, Haaland and De Bruyne are all scoring. An honestly dreadful start. Dreadful start to a season which has slightly got better. I say slightly, we're surviving. 11th place for Coventry and for the first season that is good. But with the players that we have signed, we still want to be more than good. And the team that's got us in 11th position in the Premier League, like I say, I mean we knew but our ratings look experienced. Sims has been here before and he was okay at Everton and Ben Sheaf was in the Arsenal Academy. He's risen to the occasion alongside the new lads, Beraldo and Illing Jr. But Nardoni, I loved actually signing this man. You could tell he had potential, although he hasn't really showed it in goals or assists. Instead, Eprom Mason Clark. He 
is the surprise this year. And end of the season, the ratings kept on climbing. Did they climb for success though? Maybe top seven? I don't really know, but as I flick to the screen at the side, doesn't really matter. We're going into Europe. We beat Manchester City to win the FA Cup. Something that could realistically happen in real life. Or maybe not realistically, but definitely mathematically. It's possible as we beat Leeds, Brighton and Chelsea. Whilst Man City got Rotherham. I mean, their run looked very easy. And Carabao Cup... We just lost to Sheffield Wednesday. Quite embarrassing, actually. Like our league finish in the end. 15 for the ratings that we have in our starting 11. Not very good. Then again, not much danger as we've got a very unhappy striker or two very unhappy strikers. Roberto the same, but Hadji Wright is very happy. Maybe it's giving him all the game time. Don't really know the details, though. We'll see in the amount of games played as Ben Sheaf still leads the way, and I absolutely love to see that, as Hadji Wright did play more and scored less. Two goals less than Ellie Sims, but our top scorer for the year is Epan Mason Clark. And Manchester City, we meet again before we venture into Europe. Probably the both of us. I didn't check their league position, only focused on us as our weakest player is top, but honestly, I'm thinking getting a right mid. I like Sakamoto, but he is one of the oldest players in the squad, being now 29 years of age. He's not going to last long. I mean, we could even put Mason Clark ahead of him with the goal tally he racked up, but of course, Samuel Illing Jr., he dominates both of them. As can we really afford one though? We've got 47 million and we do need a fullback for the bench. Gonna be a strict budget or strict negotiations as if we maybe do that and we could sell Roberto and have a good bench anyway. That seems right to me as although it doesn't count for nothing because we can't be sacked. The board want the Europa League final. They also want the Europa League reaching through the Premier League this time. And I'm actually aiming higher. Could we get top four? If Leicester City's got top four before or actually top one, why can't we as our first player? Went and got a free agent in Amaburu. I thought I'd save a bit of money and make some also. As in a big turn of fortune, it is not Roberto that's left. It is Hadji Wright going for almost 40 million. Losing a strong bench player, but having 72 to spend is absolutely huge when we're trying to win the Conference League. As I've put my money all into one player only. Welcome to Coventry, Daniel Mallon. That's right, you did see that his evaluation was 49 million, if I'm not mistaken. I paid 70. That's the price they wanted, and that is the price I just had to pay. And I'm sticking with the investment. I think he'll come good. He's better than what we had. He replaces Sakamoto as the first game of the season. Hey, he even scores the winner. Could say it doesn't get better, but it obviously can if we can win that Europa group and then win the whole competition. And this year we have to be up there. We literally have to be up there. When you look at our squad on paper, it's on par with Man City. Or maybe going a bit far, but it is literally a mini Man City. We've got our own De Bruyne in Nardoni, our own Haaland in Sims. Similarly built, if you get the pun in there, as we are fourth in the league and we're just behind City. And one draw is good, 10 wins is fantastic, but 8 defeats on the other hand tells me we could slip up. Then again, top 4 in a Europa League season for us when we didn't lose a game is near enough fantastic. Couldn't ask for any more as I'm not going to check scorers. We have no money. We have literally got a roll straight to see if we win the competition. As have we managed to do that? We haven't won the Premier League title. It just popped up with a graphic for Liverpool as I don't see a Europa League final. Oh, and that's a shame. But what isn't a shame is the fact that we have secured Champions League football this year, finishing fourth in the table where we were halfway through. Yes, 13 defeats, 
but it's the wins that kept us there. And that's what you love to see, as no luck in the FA Cup this year, beaten by Man United yet again in the round of 16. We do actually make it far in competitions and only get beat by good teams as the round of 16 in the Carabao Manchester City this time round. Not bad, not bad, as who won the Europa League. It is Braga and Atalanta. No offence to them clubs, but I expect a better quality. I saw Man United got through the plumbing areas. Where did we go out? I mean, Braga beat us on penalties. Sometimes your luck's in, and sometimes your luck is very lucky, as this is our team. We're a team lucky on ratings. No 90 rated, but a lot on the cusp as we need to check the top scorer as Callum O'Hare is literally Mr. Coventry. And third season coming up, third season of Premier League football and the first season of Champions League in which we have to somehow improve the staggering team we've managed to make. And there's only one position we can improve and that is centre mid. Top is doing brilliantly, but he won't be playing overall. As a sad thing, I've got to say, is Abiku isn't the best player at the club. Absolutely love the guy. And I think if he is still here when we get to the Champions League final, I might sneak him on the bench. Give him a cheeky cameo as 108 million after signing some hefty contracts is a good wad of cash. The only thing we've got to do with it is go ahead and find that central midfielder and 100 million should get us one of maybe the world's best. As yes, it definitely does, as we're building a Dutch spine with the team here as the next addition is Frankie de Jong. He's actually come from Spurs, who are in our division. 80 million, though, will sway Daniel Levy and his pockets. As it goes without saying, that is probably our only signing of the season. Like to keep money left over when we're in the Champions League. If anything goes wrong, we've got 20 million to just fall back upon and sell maybe a player plus that 20 million. It should give us a good player, but our team is set for now. Only the one huge addition before Manchester United. A team that I'm pretty sure will be, well, very jealous of Frankie de Jong. They've tried to sign him for ages, or supposedly tried to sign him, or supposedly tried to sign him. That's the word I was looking for, as that is the result I was definitely hoping for. Sims with the stunner for the 10 men Coventry as our Champions League group, Atalanta, Real Sociedad, and rack out of Poland. Interesting that, I always love to see a team in our Champions League group that is quite niche. Some say it takes away the competitiveness of the group stages as the group in the Premier League is us in that top four. That's the group we wanna be in and the group we are currently in. We're one point away from United, so job is not done. We wanna be there next year as Rakow didn't do well in our group as we won it in the Champions League. And that sets up Bayern Munich for Coventry, the Sky Blues, a trip to the Allianz Arena. Pretty sure that's enjoyable. Whatever the result and whatever the weather, as look at our team, we've got nine or five 90 rated. Almost at nine then. I don't think we've got that many, but Frankie de Jong, Malin, Nardoni, O'Hare. And who can forget the out of contract Ellie Sims, who we're gonna get signed up as we've got the 20 million to do so. Glad I kept that cash around. Always comes in handy for one thing or the other as we beat Bayern. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure I saw Sancho in their team. So that's a controversial move as we beat them with him scoring. We could actually do it this year as long as we avoid maybe City and Real Madrid, Liverpool, all them big, big teams, as we do have 90 rated players. And the team I said I wanted to avoid first out of that bunch, of course, it's Manchester City. Game loves doing it to me. I actually expect it now. But when you look at our squad, only three players below 90. Is this the best team we have practically ever built in career mode? It may well be 
because we nil in Manchester City. That doesn't happen often and they still could come back. It's a draw in the game, but we progress on aggregate, which sees us head to the Allianz, but the stadium this time for Juventus, a powerhouse who I think's a bit past it. No offence to the Turin faithful, but we need to win this game with one of their ex-players and they beat us. Oh dear, oh dear. That means a comeback for us as we go ahead and get it. 5-4 on aggregate. Sakamoto with the goal. Sims with one. Nardoni with one. And had you right the first scorer. And no, not for us because we sold him to Juventus as it's going to be the Veltins Arena for Barca. That's the final game of the year, as we only finished third, and we could have won that league. Come on, with the ratings? We had to be winning it, as only round four of the FA Cup to Bournemouth. That's sloppy, and we didn't win the Carabao. Disappointing in England, in, of course, our home country, as there is our lineup. We're almost all 90. We have really progressed Coventry. It's been amazing to see. It's unfortunate Sheep didn't make 90, but he does make this final. As going into this game, I did do what I alluded to. Justin Abikwu sat on our bench. As I'm hoping he can get a cameo and we can be 5-0 up in this game because Barca are here for the taking as they might take their first chance with 890 rated in the squad. I know they're not all defenders, but we shouldn't let them have chances. As easy as that. As De Jong to run away with the ball, though, from their corner. And he's an ex-player as he uses Daniel Mallon. The Dutch connection right there. And oh, De Jong sat Balde down. Just make a move, someone. Here is Sims, who's put it in rose ed that's dreadful movement is that from a player that is so highly rated as this man is as well illing junius reading kunde and he's got nowhere to go now but he pulls it back to de jong and he hits kunde is this a handball var right here and does he stop the ball getting into sims's path with his hand I think that's a definite penalty. Thank you, referee. Playing rather fairly right there. As O'Hare to strike. And he puts it in the top corner. Callum O'Hare has to celebrate. And in real life, he has a pair of sunglasses, which he sometimes puts on. They must not be at the stadium. He hasn't brought them to Germany, but he has brought his scoring boots. 1-0 Coventry in the Champions League final. Good stuff. Bright stuff. We just need to add to that. That's an easy chance for Ferran. I can't believe he's missed that. After we score to be so vulnerable at the other end of the field. It's mad. As Frankie de Jong running through them. He's the best player in this game. As Ellie Sims needs to keep away. And Ellie Sims has kept away. His movement and touches and shooting has been crap in the first 30 anyway. But that's a good move. Stole it off the defender. And he's going to try and chip it up. He's still got the ball. Another shout for handball there as we're reaching the end of the game. Wasn't given. Or the end of the half, should I say. Which we're going in 1-0 up. Oh, but they've got a chance at the start of the second half. And this one, it's Pedri. It's blocked by Sheaf. And then a good save after Sheaf lost it. Very strong recovery there as King Min Jae is getting past his press. Need to press them more. That's a brilliant tackle on Pedri. And now we go. Now we go. That is a ball through onto Illing Jr. Who's going to try and cut inside of the fullback. Illing Jr. for 2-0. Phenomenal save by Ter Stegen. Keeping Barcelona in this game. And they've got a chance on the edge. A bit of a bad tiki-taka pass. Which is the finest in the world as it stands. As we've got the ball right there. And Callum O'Hare on a run. Give it into Ilang Jr. And there is Ellie Sims. He's released from danger. One on one with Ter Stegen. And I'm putting a Bikwu on. Honestly, what is that, Sims? I know you're 91 rated, but a Bikwu 63, and he's going to give it his all. As he does in black and white this season, chasing the ball down from the defenders. Just in a Bikwu, you know. One on one. Oh, he's saved again. The Mariner himself helping Coventry get over the line and beat Barcelona to become world champions. Fantastic result, fantastic performance, both going hand in hand as Ben Sheaf's going to lift the trophy. He's been pivotal for us, literally everything's gone through him. He has led the growth 
as if you want to see your team grow, leave it in the comments.